afternoon everybody and i am extremely happy and delighted to have with me a second edition of pbf showcase dr shubhano bose who we very dearly call shubhanata uh this season of pbf showcase will be little different than what we were doing before we'll try to make keep a balance of both formal and informality here and we'll ask questions which we have not asked before so delay let me go and straight away uh, welcome you uh, shubhananda and i'm very happy that you have said yes to be my first Thank guest you. on this uh, pbf Thank showcase you. first question so this is this is this interview is going to be about uh, three segments see the first segment is little bit about career you know activities work life etc the second segment is about personal life and the third one is a little bit of a uh, rapid fire okay sure okay so the first question is that what according to you uh, what makes a good hospitality personality i'm sure a lot of people are you know willing to join this industry how would you define a good personality for hospitality so you want to ask me what are the features that makes a good hospitality personality right is that right yes or what are the factors right so so i think it's quite simple straightforward hospitality is a people business yeah it's a people business it's for the people by the people of the people it's all about the people yeah so you need to have people who loves people it's about people loving people it's not for people who are very introvert and all uh, so it's about people who loves life who loves to talk who likes people who likes the warmth who likes to smile a lot who wants to exude that um, warmth and uh, being hospitable uh, i think it's about um, people who are genuinely i uh, want to travel make new friends i possibly love to eat and dine and wine you know i mean it's it's like a lifestyle so those people are very successful uh, as a hospitality professionals or sometime now we have got a new term called hospitality rare hospitality rare is like a person who is a hospitality professional i think it's about people business so you need to be people centric you need to be a people's man or a woman and i think that is possibly the most important criteria of an hospitality uh, professional to be successful you need to be somebody who can exude that warmth in the room can create that uh, moments of wow for the other people you know as yeah. professor david forsket very famously said uh, to be human is to be hospitable to be human is to be hospitable so if you are not hospitable then you are possibly not a human being so uh, one of the one of the oldest uh, uh, hospitality uh, trait of humanity uh, or, or or rather one of the oldest trait of humanity has been hospitality if you uh, remember in the in the very very old times there used to be inns where there were no hotels inns where the old especially we have read a lot about the roman empire even in india people used to go and travel Atiti and chala, travel right? used to stay ah. in the stranger's house so that yeah. was the hospitality so uh, to be human is to be hospitable so that i think is the most important criteria for a person uh to be successful in this industry taking that forward you know you already have a saying in india atithi deva bhava right so yeah. taking that for forward what is the future of hospitality career wise in india in the next 5 to 10 years it's absolutely uh, awesome because the kind of uh, like career opportunity that hospitality uh, industry offers i think it's the uh, top of the service sector because we know that indians are very good in service indians are very good in soft skill indians are very good in the service industry whether it's about hotel restaurant hospitality or whether it's about um, retail it's a fashion 
So anything that do with the service sector has to be connected with some kind of hospitality. And when we say hospitality industry, we necessarily don't talk about hotels or restaurant. Of course, they are very important segments, but also there are segments like airlines, there are segments like shipping, cruise lines, there are segments like amusement parks, there are places like the big malls, huge, huge malls happening all over the country, even in the tier two, tier three cities now, the people who are managing the malls. Yeah, then there are healthcare, healthcare, mm-hmm. hospital. Hospital needs a lot of hospitality people, whether it's a food, whether it's about chef, it's about the PR, uh, even going and talking with the guest or the guest client party. It's all yes. about hospitality now. Hospital is no more uh, like uh, just about health. It's about much yes. more than that. So Correct. I think if you take the entire story of hospitality, it's a huge industry. And so the getting a good job, getting good promotion and a fast track uh, promotion. I think uh, we have seen people in 30s uh, become the vice presidents and all because the promotion is very fast. People can go up the ladder quite quickly. And uh, I think I think it's a huge career and especially for India because India, the hospitality industry and is increasing uh, very, very fast. If you see the hotels coming up, cafes coming up, other restaurants coming up, new airlines coming up. You have, you have seen Bangalore has now gone from one airline, one airport to two airport to three airports now. So, you know, so everywhere they need people and they need hospitality graduates. And also that there are a lot of entrepreneurs which are coming up in this field. There were many of them, isn't yes. it? Yes. Uh, entrepreneur has come heavily in hospitality, whether you come for the hotel industry, uh, which is like, um, you know, Oyo Rooms, Tribu, Fab House, Fab Rooms, uh, and there are Signet. There are about uh, at least 20 of these uh, small, uh, huge to medium to small hotel groups. Oyo, incidentally, is the number two in the world in terms of the number of rooms of the Marriott. Uh, yes. Then you have got um, food business, food, where there are people who are opening not just restaurant, but also they're opening cafes, they're opening uh, tea, uh, tea joints, you know, uh, just like coffee shops. Now tea has become very popular, you know, breaks like uh, chai break and uh, things like that. There are people who are opening food trucks, even in a place like Calcutta, uh, we have got food trucks now, every day parked in Newtown, in near the Central Mall. There are so much of entrepreneurial options here that I think no other industry offers. Uh, bakery, bakery, right. the cloud, cloud kitchens, kitchen. which I think yeah. during the COVID, yes, exactly. During COVID, it like um, um, almost mushroomed. Uh, yeah. Almost everyone opened a cloud kitchen in their own, own house or own garage. Uh, and I think even now, a lot of these cakes and the birthday cakes and the pastries and uh, the celebration cakes are not bought from typical shops but bought from maybe Swiggy or Tomato through the small entrepreneurs and they are selling or, or to your friends which were in your WhatsApp group. So I think very small to large, there has been a big spot yeah, in the entrepreneurship and the new new ideas are coming, which is very good actually. A lot of new ideas are coming. So, you know, I, I heard in one of your uh, previous interviews, you were mentioning that uh, when you started IHM many years back, many moons back, you had about 30 students in the first batch, right? And now you have um, chapters across India, you have chapters outside India. Over the period of time, uh, are you seeing a change in the profile of students who are coming? My question is about uh, mainly people want to become doctors and engineers in our country. Are you seeing some amount of these people who could have taken up engineering or science are also deviating into a career like this? Yes. Absolutely. I mean, when 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 we started, it was like um, 
playing against the wind actually because as you very rightly said people wanted that uh, top 5 career with engineering or doctor or lawyer or a ca or yes. possibly uh, somebody like a um, uh, you know a mba so there there are four five six seven careers and very very stereotyped kind of thing yeah uh, maybe even economics and uh, you become an ias officer that's a big career for the bihar jharkhand uttar pradesh belt to become an ias civil service upsc yeah so that was like kind of a, a very stereotyped very kind of a, but then i think i think all this thing changed with the um, economic liberalization i think with the economic liberalization we have seen the f- huge capital has entered the service sector especially uh, the hospitality sector i mean 30 years back in india we had only four five hotel chains it was a taj oberoi a uh, little bit of itc itc yes and little bit of maybe one or two higher agency but now we have got all the major hotel chains in the world uh, mm-hmm. all the major restaurant chains in the world whether it's a mcdonalds or starbucks or it's about burger uh, kings or it's about subway or tack bell so you just name it uh, they are all all there even your um, the tea uh, all the all the top tea companies as well are already here tw g and everything else so so the thing is that uh, there has been a huge spot in the economic growth of india and service industry have really really got that boost i think what has also happened is that career wise people have understood by the success of the people who join the hospitality trade that it's a good industry to join it's a good career to join i remember uh, that there are time when it, it used to be like we used to get students but it would come as a rebound okay i haven't gotten in engineering i haven't got in medicine i have got near so now what to do something to do let's do hotel management so that was a kind of um, you know a mindset now people want to become a chef people yeah. want to become a uh, heston blumental they want to become a uh, gagan anand or a sanjeev kapoor or someone you know who wants to be in a page 3 or the cover page earning a few lakhs per day that kind of a lifestyle you know so obviously it's been uh, a sea change from what it was even 20 years back not even 30 20 years back to what it is now and i think is going to be only increase in hugely because indians are indian hospitality graduates are not just working in india they are working all over the world we have to understand that there are lot of uh, exports happening in terms of the human capital so if and if you go to usa you go to canada you go to uk you go to france and uh, recently 620 of my students was in a fifa qatar world cup so everywhere the indian graduates are recruited and they are given the first choice because they are good hard working they can they have got a good attitude they have got hospitality in their dna i think uh, many reasons why hospitality have succeeded but it's also uh, if you if you get into a shipping cruise line and if you are in a luxury cruise line and you won't surprise if you find 70% of the staff are indian and out of that another 70% are from goa so, so whether is a chef or an bar barman or the guy who is serving you pr manager will find everybody from either india or sri lanka or bangladesh so that's the kind of uh, you know uh, people have been able to export the manpower over the world uh, talk about middle east if you go to places like uae or qatar you will see all indians are working in all kinds of restaurant not just indian restaurant japanese restaurant italian restaurant the people who are working are all from india so yes. i think i think that is one of the reason why it really got such a big spark in the career wise i believe a lot of success stories have uh resulted in the people listening to that and then deciding to go for hospitality is the last question on this professional part of the thing now today's world post covid primarily we are 
talking suddenly we are realizing the importance of work life balance uh mental health you know those kind of things in the, in a hospitality industry where primarily if i'm talking about hotels airlines etc where there is the the working hours may be different would be difficult given that situation how do you see the work life balance and mental health been taken care of by major groups or organizations for their employees very good question there see there are certain professions which demands a different uh, kind of a life and so we call it hospitality is not a life it's a lifestyle i mean whether it's about being a chef cooking on the 31st of december when everybody is enjoying uh, or working in odd hours or whether it's a pilot uh, who is the flying the plane at the same time when when the entire uh, world is uh, you know enjoying a new year eve or whether it's a guy working in an army uh, trying to protect the motherland in the in the borders or whether it's a policeman on the field who is trying to get the law and order irrespective of whether it's a christmas eve or a holy so the professional requirements or the doctor for that matter who is handling maybe heart attacks and the uh, pregnancy things the, there are professionals which demands certain kinds of uh, lifestyle which are not normal 9 to 6 or you know 9 to 7 kind of thing and uh, that is a professional demand professional requirement and uh, you can't come out of it having said that i think is lot of passion lot of uh, energy lot of love for what you are doing when a chef is creating something new it doesn't matter what time of the day he is working he is so passionate he will create that food and then only he will rest uh i think same happens in lot of other professions um work life balance yes the work life balance factor is less in hospitality as compared with lot of so called uh, um jobs in the office but i have seen entrepreneurs from all over the country and the world actually in different field i think entrepreneurs life is even worse it's like they have absolutely no work life balance okay they they sometimes take a leave for maybe 3 days to go with a family but there is no work life balance they get up at 6 in the morning sleep at 1 in the night and they are working throughout there is no balance it's only imbalance but then that is a part of their profession that they have chosen of their own uh, consciously knowing that i won't be able to do so much of work life balance but things are now getting better especially in hospitality i know the hotel chains like hyatt regency they are doing they used to have five or six days a week now now they are doing there are six holidays six of in a month so uh, same for taj as well and some hotel is also doing five days a week now so things are definitely getting better but yes odd hours night night shift uh, working very hard during the festivals and during the time when people will spend money this things i think cannot be avoided okay great awesome so let me now ask you some personal questions i'm sure you know everybody would love to hear know a bit more about you you as a human person uh my first question what kind of book do you read and what is the last book that you read <laughs> So, I used to read a lot of books actually at one point of time but I think over the last 5 years and um, during covid I did started reading again and um last few years after covid has been so so uh, demanding I don't remember uh, reading a book completely but yeah but recently I picked up an absolutely fascinating book uh, by Chitrita Banerjee who is a very famous chef Bengali chef uh, Chitrita Banerjee she's she must be quite quite senior now must be 80 now she lives in US now but uh, sh- her recipes on Bengali food I'm very fond of food as a hobby I also cook as a hobby chef I mean it's absolutely awesome absolutely awesome uh recipe totally different the way she 
uh, explains things like posto bata uh, posto bata the fish you know with this um, uh, things which are not really happen every day uh where where little bit of a tweaking so I, i am right now in the middle of uh, that book on the bengali cuisine and also two books i bought on on the festival festivals of um, bengal and what all you eat uh, during the festival you know it's not about only durga puja it's also about baro mashe taro parbon exactly paro bha exactly baro baro mashe baro parbon taro parbon that's kind of thing so she wrote exceedingly well so these are two small booklet not not very fat books um i'm really enjoying the book i can relate and i'm sure uh, given a break i will cook some of those um uh, in my home so yeah so uh, the other book which i was reading is just next to me so it's quite interesting i still feel it's a book on etiquette actually which possibly every 21 year old should read but then i think everyone should read it's not it's a its book is called as a gentleman would say so it's a book on etiquette which says responses to life's importance and sometimes awkward situation so how do you actually get yourself and how do you behave yourself what's your personal etiquette um not as a hotelier or as a hospitality but as a man as a human being yeah it's not that you have to accept everything is written in the book but it gives you a fantastic insight about how a gentleman reacts in awkward situations not generally in a general situation somebody may be uh, sitting in an airport next to you uh, waiting for the flight and is shouting at the top of the voice on the on the mobile phone right. or doing a, a video call and there is no other seat so how do you react whether you go out of that place and stand somewhere or you say something nicely or you look at him rudely give him you know dirty looks so how do you handle this kind of situation so very interesting yeah that book really sounds good yeah i need to yes. read that though i'm not a gentleman i need to read that okay so yes. the second question is uh, what is your fitness routine because i know you are superbly fit and you <laughs> eat very consciously Um, yeah. you have your own chef you know and stuff like that so what yeah. is your fitness routine to stay in shape year after year i think we all need to be in good shape and i think uh, again covid has been a great um, kind of uh, educator in that i mean we have learned so much from covid uh, more than for anybody and especially i'll tell for entrepreneurs who are on the go uh irrespective of how old are you or irrespective of what are the other commitments and you know uh, getting up in the morning the late night flights late night departure late night arrivals and getting up next morning at 6:30 again because you have to go out at 8:30 meetings and you can't say no to it so the only way to be on the trot and be uh successful is to look after yourself i think being fit is very important being fit doesn't mean that you need to be a fanatic about fitness i don't think i'm a fanatic but yes i do um i do fitness almost 5 days 5 days a week at least uh, if not more i and and the day i missed it because i've got a morning flight and things like that i try to cover it up by walking as much as i do i i remember just the other day i was in delhi airport and if it was a morning flight i decided to take the carpet to walk not the travel letter because i know i missed of my fitness regime in the morning so when you are working on the carpet is actually working yeah. working on travel letter is not a working i mean yeah. of course it's working but it's not the working you know what i mean so i i and i was in almost last get vistara so i took all the way i walked in a quite a brisk pace to the carpet not i haven't taken the travel letter uh sometime i take the stairs even in the my office or in airport where there is a choice between an escalator and the stairs i take the stairs not the escalator so in a small small things actually are important which has now become a part of my thing so i i kind of do that of course if you are carrying a heavy luggage you can't take on stairs but generally if with a handbag you can and not difficult 
and also i think the food is very important i think equally important uh, to fitness is uh, food uh, i strongly believe that you should we should all have good food but small quantity i am in the food industry so i love good food i want to um, create good food i love people having good food and pay a lot of money for it <laughs> so <laughs> you know so the thing is that the body don't need so much of the food as we think they need so yes. the body body which is there uh, is possibly happy with the x quantity of food but possibly uh, we eat x plus y which is not necessary so i think food is very important we should try to avoid junk food we should try to avoid by avoiding i don't mean that you don't need to leave it for your life but try to have less i think oily food spicy food when i travel um, i always go for little oriental food instead of indian food although i love indian food but i go always travel i have oriental food because that's like uh, can't go wrong with that and uh, possibly a lot of fruits a uh, lot of vegetarian lot of vegetable and um, no sweets absolutely and yeah lot of tea I mean uh, for me tea is more important yeah. than coffee. Yeah, yeah. I I'm not a coffee guy maybe one coffee a day is more more than enough. But a lot of tea, especially green tea and all that exotic tea that you also do Rishmita and tea I'm a tea guy. So I'm yes. sure mm, I have seen your collection of tea, yes. Yes, I love tea. I love to offer good tea to my guests, you know. so that's that's very very important actually so now uh, we are going to do a quick rapid fire yeah. uh, I, these are all very easy questions so i don't think you have to think at all you can just quickly answer shut no so problem my first question is wine or scotch oh <laughs> both both okay kolkata or bangalore i know you love bangalore but kolkata or bangalore which one you prefer no kolkata any day because it's such a cool city cool city okay yeah not weather wise but otherwise yes unicorn or solo pruner because there are a lot of solo always. pruner in pbf yeah so i had been always been solo but uh, obviously a couple of things which right now i'm doing with some partners so uh, i think this is not a choice it all depends what you are doing i think solo pruner is answer but again having said that there are certain project right now i'm doing with a couple of other people and which are really fun favorite actor of all time who is your favorite actor of all time <laughs> many actually um my all time uh, uh favorite is sean connery and okay. it's quite sad sean connery and me uh, we received the honorary doctorate from edinburgh university in the same event in the same oh, function okay. together awesome. yeah That together must have been really great. and sad. so all three of us received the honorary doctorate in the same event so it was lovely to interact with sir sean and to talk with him to have a lot of he's a very humorous guy he's got a huge sense of humor and we signed in the same book actually sean connery definitely is at uh, top of my list um uh, tom cruise always loved him um sharukh khan okay okay yes yeah sharukh khan is my favorite as well great awesome <laughs> any Last day question yes. of the evening a song or a quote that sums up your life yeah uh, when when i was doing shushmita that my ca and ca is quite a treacherous course actually everybody knows who have done and who have not done and you need lot of inspiration apart from just studying and uh, uh, you know crying i'm not good, get, not getting it into this etc so i had one song from kishore kumar who is my all time favorite and still that song has been an inspiration in my life it's not that i like it it's been an inspiration and when i was 21 i i passed see when i was 22 and half i must have listened that song a billion time ruk jana nahi tu kahi haar ke okay wonderful ruk jana nahi tu kahi haar ke i think that absolutely sums up the way you look at life thank yeah, you so exactly. much i had so much fun talking to you i hope you also had same here same here fun. thank you thank you so much thank you and thank you rishmita thank, thank you lovely to speak to you thank you thank you thank you Bye.